Hey, what's up everyone? This is Nick, and today we're doing another collectible review. This is the SH Monster Arts Godzilla 1991, and this is the Shinjuku Decisive Battle version. So this is meant to accompany the re-release of Mecha King Ghidorah, also from the 1991 Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah movie. Uh, and you can see this is also the Shinjuku Decisive Battle Special Set. So this Ghidorah figure was originally released in uh, spring 2015, um, and it has recently been re-released with some different accessories, some uh, different alternate parts. We'll take a look at that in a separate upcoming review. Um, I actually picked that up a while ago, earlier this year when it was released, and I just had it had the space to display it, so I didn't bother opening it. Um, but now that um, I have the accompanying Godzilla, I figured now's um, the most appropriate time to crack it open, review it uh, as well. Uh, now this did just release. I know Japanese retailers um, currently have this in stock, most Japanese retailers. Um, U.S. retailers, at the time of recording this, Still just have it up for pre-order, but I'm sure they'll start getting it in stock within the coming weeks. Um, probably most U.S. retailers should probably have it in stock, maybe like within the next month or so. Um, so this is a Heisei Godzilla. So the Heisei era Godzilla films are late 80s through uh, the mid 90s. So that's the Return of Godzilla, um, Godzilla vs. Violante, um, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah. Godzilla vs. Mothra, uh, Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla, Space Godzilla, and Destroya. So those are, in my opinion, like the best series of Godzilla films. And while I really do love the uh, Godzilla 1998 design, just for being so radical and different, as well as the uh, Shin Godzilla uh, design for the same reasons, um, the Godzilla that pops into my mind instantly whenever whenever somebody says the name Godzilla is the Heisei Godzilla. Uh, to me, he's the iconic one that most people probably think of when they think of Godzilla. You know, if you're making a meme or a gif, this is probably the Godzilla that you're thinking of. So when I say Heisei 90s, I just mean in general. Um, he looks fairly similar throughout most of those movies, but of course hardcore fans are going to notice um, the specific differences. Uh, from film to film, so there are slight variations with the suit. Personally, if I had to tell you my favorite out of them, I would say it's either the 1989 or the 1991. I think he looks the most animalistic, the most intimidating in both of those films. It's a toss-up for me. I really probably couldn't decide um, if I like 89 or 91 more. Now, they did, SH Monster Arts did recently release a... Um, Godzilla 1989, uh, a little over a year ago, and I think the reason they did that was because they were re-releasing Violante, so it was a good time to do that. It was at least around the time of that re-release, and um, obviously it makes sense that they would release the 91 um, around the same time uh, as their Mecha King Ghidorah re-release to coincide with that. That being said, though, I do think it's strange that we got two Heisei Godzillas that look very, very similar to each other within a relatively um, close um, release window. Um, and from other reviews that I've watched, I think this Godzilla is an all new sculpt. I've seen the side-by-side -side comparisons between him and the 89, and I know the head design is definitely different, but I think the body is different as well, which is really impressive. I don't think SH Monster has had to do that, but it is cool that they did that. Um, I think a lot of other companies would probably just repack the 89 and maybe tweak it a little bit at the most with a different head sculpt, maybe a different paint wash and call it a day. But it is really nice that they went that extra mile. Um, I don't have any other Heise SH Monster X Godzilla's to do a comparison with this with. Um, I used to have like all of them and I went through a phase where I pretty much thought I was done collecting, sold them off. Now I'm collecting the re-releases and um, new releases and I'm going back and picking up a few on eBay that I don't think are going to be re-released anytime soon. So uh, keep your eyes open for some more SH Monster Arts reviews in the future. Now, um, real quick, the packaging 
is very standard for the line. We have the claw marks that reveal the figure inside. Uh, just photography image of the figure in different poses. Uh, the back looks very familiar. I know they have these similar ga gallery shots on um, all their packaging. I do like how the packaging has remained fairly consistent for the line over the last 10 years or so, which is really, really impressive. Um, yeah, I think the line is probably 11 years old or almost 11 years old at this point. So it's um, still going strong and that is really cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, the packaging here is very standard. There's nothing too flashy. Um, it doesn't really stand out compared to some of the other Godzillas they have, um, but it's serviceable. I do think that um, this kind of silvery gray backdrop with kind of this dusty kind of windswept design uh, is meant to match the packaging for Mecha King Ghidorah. It has very similar aesthetics and color choices. So that's really cool. Um, so let's look at the figure itself now. I know there are two different suits used in the uh, Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah 1991 film. This is supposedly based on the suit that we see in the second half of the film. So for those of you that aren't that familiar with the movie, or um, you haven't seen it in a while, there's one Godzilla at the beginning of the movie um, that is, I, I'd say honestly he looks a little bit slimmer, and they, the characters travel back in time in an attempt to stop him from ever existing, and when they come back to the present, um, he still exists. It turns out that his existence is inevitable, and what they did to prevent him from existing actually just made him stronger, so he appears taller and bulkier. Um, it's not something that's like super dramatic appearance-wise, like maybe someone that's not really a fan probably wouldn't pick up on the little differences, but fans do notice that this Godzilla at this point in the movie is taller and stronger. Now most, from what I'm told, most Godzilla 1991 figures are based on like earlier appearances in the film. This is based on his later appearance. Obviously the reason SH Monsters probably did that is one, to make him look as different from the 1989 figure as possible, and two, so that he would look right paired up with the Mecha King Ghidorah. Now, that being said, and I preface this by saying I don't have any other Heisei-era SH Monster Arts Godzilla's to compare this to size-wise, um, so I can't like line them all up based on the years and judge if this is the right size, but I can tell you based on other reviews and just remembering what the other ones felt like in my hands and like how big they were. Um, I can tell you this one is not like, uh, he's not like a, a much more like substantial or beefy Godzilla compared to the others. I know he's not as big as the 95. He's a little bit smaller. He feels a little bit thinner, a little bit smaller overall. I want to say he's probably about the size of the 94, which I think was the first Godzilla they released. Definitely not as small as like the 64 or the 54 or any of those, um, but he's probably about the size of the 94 if I had to judge. Maybe the same size as the 89. So I think it would have been nice if he was a little bit bigger than the 89. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe, I, I'd say he's the same size as the 89 based on what I've seen, just holding the different figures in hand and looking at them in person um, and same size if not maybe a smidge smaller than the 94 and definitely smaller than the 95. So it, it would be nice if he was bigger than the 89 it would look cool even just a little bit bigger. Um, I feel like this line overall tries to keep scale in mind to a certain degree um, but they're not like a slave to it. It would be nice if we had like really accurate sizing between all of them, but I think overall they, they do a good a good job and it's it's close enough. Real quick, I'll show you how he looks in comparison to the Mecha King Ghidorah, which is really the important thing here. That's who you're gonna have him pose next to. Um, so I went ahead and opened up Mecha King Ghidorah just so we could do this in the review and then um, we'll take a more in-depth look at 
Mecha King Ghidorah in a separate video because there's so much to cover with that pair. So you can see Godzilla comes up to, if you hold their feet about level with each other, Godzilla comes up to about the base, the very base of the necks, the very tip of the chest on um, Mecha King Ghidorah, which I would say uh, is accurate. Uh, so really, really good looking there. I like that quite a bit. Now, let's take a closer look at Godzilla. We'll start with what um, most most people complain about in this line, and rightfully so. Um, this is a problem that the line has had for years and years, is eyes not being painted correctly. Like one eye is looking one way, one eye is looking the other way. I thankfully have never encountered that issue except for maybe the first release of the Shin Godzilla 2016 figure um, and I ended up selling that one. I don't even think I opened it um, or maybe I did just to like see how how it looked but I never kept that one. Other than that I haven't had any eye issues and thankfully that is consistent here. The eyes look really sharp on this Godzilla. Um, there's something about the brow, how low it is and just the angle of the eyes that just makes him look so mean and animalistic. Uh, the paintwork on the eyes is really quite nice because you have like the pupil and you have the iris around it that looks very fiery. You can see where they've tried to put in like some browns and some reds and then you have the white around it. Um, so it's very layered. It's not just a black dot with maybe some color around it. Um, you can see they've actually colored in there. And one of the things that I love about the X Plus Godzilla 91, the Yuji Sakai figure that was released maybe a little over a year ago, uh, the eyes look very watery on that one. And I love that because this is the Godzilla that's in that scene where he's staring down the guy that he saved back during World War II when he was a Godzilla Saurus and the guy was a Japanese soldier. And they, they both kind of shed a tear because they kind of remember their past. So I like how there's some wateriness to the eyes. There's a nice shine. It makes it look more alive, but it also reminds me of that scene, which is uh, very memorable. Um, the teeth, I think, are very cleanly painted. There's two rows of teeth in here, and all the individual teeth are painted in a very nice bone-like coloring, and the inside of the mouth is very wet, very red looking. Um, and there is a slight wash on the head. I've seen some other samples of this figure in other reviews where the wash is heavier on some, lighter on others. Mine is barely there. It's very, very, very subtle. I don't see it on the rest of the figure. So the transition from the body to the head is very nice because it's just such a subtle, subtle, subtle um, brushing of this, like, gray that I guess is supposed to be like debris or dust or something like that that does help highlight the details but it's not so drastic that it looks like it's a separate head from a different figure. Um, I think it was Steven's Toys Reviews that I was watching where he had one where the paint wash was very heavy on the head and it just didn't match the rest of the body so it looked like it had been swapped out with the head of a different figure or something like that. So I think there's just variance with how heavy they go with the dry brushing. Here I'd say I have just enough to bring out some of the details in the face that help um, accentuate the difference in this between the 89. I think that's probably why they did the dry brushing here. Um, but it's so subtle that it doesn't look too drastic in comparison to the rest of the body. Um, and I do like the black that's used. I think it's the right amount of um, kind of like matte. It's not too shiny. It's not too... Not too flat. I think the light bounces off of it really nice and shows off all these really nice skin scaly textures. Um, the bony color on the nails is very nice. I like how it gets darker as you get closer to where they attach into the body. Um, and then where they where they do come out of, it's very wet looking. Like the ends of his toes right before the nails start. It's very wet there. And it's consistent on the hands, which I think is a nice detail. Um, I don't really know why they're like that. I just, maybe he just came out of the water or something like that. But it is really cool. Um, I like that he's not that shiny all over the body, though. I like the, the coloring that they used, the um, finish 
on the rest of the scales, I think, looks really sharp. But I do like how um, the nails look kind of wet. It just makes them pop a little bit more, in my opinion. But they're very, very realistically painted. I don't see any chipping. Actually, now that I say that, there's a very, very, very tiny little chip on this toe here. You might not even be able to see it on camera. But um, other than that, I don't have any issues. The fins, very nicely painted. I'd say pretty much the same coloration that you see on just about any Heise Godzilla that you get. Very dark in the center gradually lightens up as we expand towards the um, irregular shaped edges. Very nice. And they do get darker as you go down the tail and then um, they don't go, they, they don't like become the same black as the scales. But they do get pretty dark, which is cool. I, I like how, I feel like all of the shifts from one shade to another shade is very gradual on all of this and looks very natural, very realistic. In fact, I think the paint job is just about as good as the X Plus that came out uh, about a year ago, the Yuji Sakai of the same design. And that, I always hold X Plus to be like top tier. Um, now, of course, you consider this is a smaller and cheaper figure. So the fact that it's as close as it is, that's really saying something. I mean, the X Plus is still nicer in the eyes and the mouth, but this is, Pretty close and when you consider it was at least half the price and it's at least half the size that's really saying something um, as far as the articulation goes this reminds me a lot of the um, Gamera 1999 that was recently re-released as a retool because it's loaded with articulation but it's very well concealed within the sculpt all of these folds and wrinkles um, and just scaly textures completely, almost completely conceal any of the gaps and lines and uh, articulating points that we have here with this figure, which is just incredible. Um, so first, um, I want to talk about the jaw. It opens fully this far and then uh, can close just about fully. There's a little bit of a gap there. Um, and then, so it can completely drop down. But it also kind of tilts at a weird angle. I think just about every uh, SH Monster it's Godzilla I've had has had that issue where like the mouth can kind of like tilt from one side to the other because I think it's on some kind of ball joint. Um, but you can kind of finagle it to straighten it out a little bit so it looks more natural, more aesthetically pleasing and realistic. But I do like that you can have it fully extended, um, fully open. I'm kind of going for maybe like 70% open with this one. Now the tongue is on a little bit of a hinge in there as well and you can supposedly use like tweezers or something to lift it up to raise it. I haven't done that. I don't really have the right tools for it. I was looking for something. I had like a little knife and I was trying to get in there but I was worried that I was going to scratch up the paint so I just left it alone for now. So maybe I'll mess with it later. Um, but the neck articulation um, is really nice. I like how we have um, something at like the very base of the head and then we have a point like in the middle of the neck and then we have another one further down in the neck and it can go up and down. That one can just wiggle back and forth but the one that's in the middle of the neck that one has a really good range where he can pivot his head side to side forward and back um, and you can raise the head Quite a bit. I don't want to do it too much and have these um, dorsal spines knock into each other, but it is cool that you can have him raise his head so he's looking up at Mecha King Ghidorah. And then we do have, um, let's see here, really nice shoulder articulation. So it can pivot in and out, go uh, forward and back. I'm not going to do the full 360 thing. I don't think anyone really has the need for that, but it can go back quite a bit. And then we do have a side to side um, where you can kind of rock this around, which is nice. And then we do have kind of like a, yeah, it looks like double elbow articulation. So you can close that up fairly tightly, actually. Not super tight, but about as tight as you can considering his girth. And then you do have 
um, wrist articulation. You can pivot it down um, side to side. Um, I'd say this is pretty much the same articulation that we had in the 94, the 95, and that we've got in with most of their uh, Heise Godzillas. Um, I don't know if the 89 is maybe a more articulated figure, because uh, I think that one's probably a little bit slimmer. Um, but I think, honestly, if it has worked before, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I know some people are upset that we haven't gotten more and more in regards to a range of articulation, in regards to articulating points over the years. But honestly, I feel like SH Monster Arts has kept the price point fairly close to what they were originally at, considering inflation and you know the fact that it's been over 10 years since they started this line. Uh, so I think that they're still consistently giving us the same bang for a buck. For the most part, you know, again, factoring in inflation, etc. Um, and also, if I feel like if you added any more articulation to this, it would break up the sculpt too much. Um, but we do have waist articulation, so you have this kind of gap back here. I can move forward a little bit, side to side. Um, I think this level of articulation is more than serviceable for a Godzilla, especially a high Zay Godzilla. I mean, he's so bulky and big, there's not too much he's going to be doing that's that wacky. Um, I do like this here, how you can kind of pivot the thigh outwards and there's some extra skin folds in there to kind of conceal the, the gap where the articulating point is. And then we do have um, knee articulation as well, but the leg moves up and down, of course. You can see a little bit of a gap in there. Um, it's really bad on some Godzillas. This one is actually pretty good. Um, and then you do have the knee articulation. And you have the ankle um, that pivots side to side, downwards, upwards as well. Um, and then we do have an articulating point at the base of the tail. Um, we have another one here. Um, looks like another one here, here, right in here, in here, 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 here. here. Here, here, right there, right there, and then it looks like almost every single one of these rings of flesh, this scaly ring-like um, segments, is separate except for the top three. I think this is just one piece. So that's pretty impressive. Um, yeah, I'm really happy with that. And none of this feels loose. I know... Like the Final Wars SH Monster Arts Godzilla, that one was like falling apart all over the place. For a lot of people, it was just too loose. I think the 89 was still a little loose for some people, but not as bad. Uh, this one, I haven't had any issues. I've seen some people open theirs up and maybe like the tip of the tail comes off or something. But I haven't had any issues with this one at all. Right out of the box, he was good to go and he's held up pretty good during this review. So, um, as far as accessories go, unfortunately we don't get anything. I feel like... At the very least, we should get a heat ray. We haven't gotten that in a while. I know almost all of the early SH Monster Arts for like the first year or so came with something. I know the first Godzilla did, the first uh, Mecha Godzilla, the 93 Mecha Godzilla came with one. I think the original Ghidorah came with uh, the beams. I think Space Godzilla came with something. Um, and I think around the time where we were at kind of like the one year mark, is where they, they stopped giving us those kinds of things. Um, but usually you would get some other kind of accessory. Like with the Burning Godzilla, he didn't come with a beam effect, but he came with like the little maser tanks or something like that. Um, so no beam with this figure. It was a little bit more justifiable in the past when they stopped doing that because you could get that at least through like an accessory pack or something, but it's been so long since any of their figures have come with anything like that it's going to be really hard for people to obtain like a loose um, heat ray or, or anything like that, atomic breath, for one of these Godzillas or any of the other kaiju. So he should come with something, especially since the 89 didn't come with something, to further differentiate this from that figure and to be more incentive for the average person who might just be a casual fan to pick this up in addition to that one. Um, 
I think he should have come with some kind of accessory to uh, differentiate him. I think um, what would have been best would have been a submarine, since when you first see this Godzilla, there's that iconic shot of him grabbing the submarine underwater. I don't think that would have added too much to the cost. I don't think it would have been that ridiculous. You know, it would have just been a sub maybe about this big, simple, um, or a heat ray, or both. I think people that had just got on the 89 would be more incentivized to pick this one up um, if he came with something um, to make him more distinct. But I am still very happy with this figure. Um, it's going to look really good next to the Mecha King Ghidorah on the shelf. And if you haven't already, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.